gluten-free scalp potatoes. Uh, scalp potatoes are actually quite easy to make gluten-free because of the myriad of flour and starch options available to you today in the market. Uh, you can either use a direct gluten-free flour substitute or you can use things like potato starch and they will help thicken your sauce. So we're going to walk through making a cheese sauce today. Um, my cheese sauce in particular is a little bit unique uh, because I like to use McLaren's Imperial Sharp Cheddar. This is a Canadian only product so if you're in the United States you may have a bit of a challenge finding this product although I understand that Kraft makes a Old English spread that is very similar and so you might want to try substituting with that. So we're going to get started. Um, you can leave your potatoes uh, with skin on with the peel on and just wash them thoroughly um, or you can peel them. About half of mine are actually looking quite clean so I'm going to wash them all. A couple of them are going to get peeled and then we're going to get started. So for this recipe we're going to be doing a 9x13 and what I typically do is I fill my 9x13 or my pan that I'm cooking in with potatoes and this gives me a rough idea of how many potatoes I need to prepare for my dish. In addition to this, we're also going to do two onions. If I was doing um, an, a 9x9 nine nine or an 8x8, eight eight, I would probably just use one onion. Okay, our potatoes and onions are ready to go, and we're going to slice them on a mandolin. We're looking for about an 8th inch slice, and so a mandolin is definitely the easiest way to go about doing that. And um, while we're getting ready to go on these, I've also got a pot warming on the stove um, with a couple tablespoons of butter in it for our starch. Okay, so in our pot we've got three tablespoons of butter melting and to that we're going to add three tablespoons of our starch. In this case I've got a mix of rice flour and potato starch. Um, instead of three cups of milk though, we're going to use four cups because I like this sauce to be a little bit thinner with all the cheese that's going to get added into it. And I'm also going to crush two garlic cloves. So as soon as your butter is melted, uh, throw in your garlic and you're going to add in your starch. And once this is combined, you can add your milk. You don't need to totally cook out the flour, but as soon as it starts coming together as a paste, you can go ahead and add your cold milk. And in this case, we're using almond milk today. All right, so we're just starting to get some color and the garlic is starting to turn a little translucent. So we're going to go ahead and whisk in our milk. Uh, all at once and it should uh, not have any lumps at all so long as your milk is cold and then we'll drop our heat down from uh, a medium high to a medium low and uh, you can add in your cheese. Okay, so we're going to wait till this just thickens a little bit and then we're going to add both of our cheeses. So while we're waiting for our sauce to come to a simmer and start to thicken, we're going to start slicing up our potatoes and onions. Alright, so I've just finished with the potatoes and now I'm starting my onions and my uh, sauce is just starting to come to a simmer and thicken. So we're going to wrap these up and get over there and add our cheese. So our white sauce is just starting to come to a simmer and if you look on the back of a spoon it should be just starting to coat. So we're going to start with adding our hard cheese, our McLaren's Imperial cheese. This is a cheese spread and if it's coming straight out of the fridge you're going to want to break it up. If you're using an alternate product like uh, the Kraft's Old English cheese, it's a little softer. If you can't find either of those, you could use something like Velveeta. All right, so we're going to wait until this cheese is combined and there aren't any lumps left, and then we'll start adding our grated cheese. So while we're waiting for all the lumps to get out, you're going to want to keep stirring it. You're not going to want to let this sit on heat because the uh, sauce will start to burn on the bottom of the pot if it sits for too long. If you haven't done so already, um, you should definitely turn it down to the low setting on your stove or your range. And we're going to go ahead and add our cheese. Now I've got about 12 ounces or half a 700 gram block of old or sharp cheddar. We're going to add this 
in portions. So you're not going to want to add this all at once. So uh, by the handful, you're going to add the cheese into the sauce and wait until it melts until adding the next portion. Okay, so our cheese sauce is just about ready to go now. All the cheese has melted and it's well combined. Now is the time to season it. So we've got a couple of options for seasoning this. If you taste it and you don't think it's quite sharp enough, you've got a couple of options here. If you can find it, gluten-free Worcestershire is a great option, so I'm going to use some of that. If you find that it's still a little bland, you can look at adding some mustard powder or even some smoked paprika I really enjoy adding as well. Now is also the time to taste it for salt. Again, this is going to depend heavily on the types of cheeses that you pick. Now is the time to taste it for salt as well. Keep in mind that the potatoes aren't going to bring a lot of flavor to the dish, so make sure your cheese sauce is where you want it. So we're going to start assembling our scalloped potatoes now. We're going to start with just a little bit of cheese sauce just to coat the bottom of the pan, and then we're going to layer in our potatoes and onions. Between each layer, make sure you add just a pinch of salt and some pepper to help season the potatoes as they cook, and then we're going to layer it to the top of the pan. So we've just coated the bottom of the pan with some cheese and we're going to start layering in our potatoes. You can do this any way you like. Um, only the top few layers are really going to make a difference in how it looks. I like to do just a little bit of an overlap on the potato and uh, zigzag back and forth across the surface. So when you're doing this and you have some smaller slices of potatoes, you can definitely line up two potatoes beside each other where a larger one would be in front or behind it to help fill the space. Any size of cut is going to work for this. Alright, so that's our first layer of potatoes done. So we're going to add just a little bit of onion as well and some salt and pepper and then another layer of the cheese sauce and we start over. If you haven't already, now's a great time to get your oven preheating. We're going to go 350 uh, Fahrenheit and uh, once this is done, we're going to cover it in tin foil and cook it for about an hour and a half. I like to give it a little bit of a shake between each uh, pouring of cheese sauce to help make sure that all the air gaps are filled before we start the next layer. Okay, so this is my second to last layer of potato and before I start on my onion, then cheese, and my last layer of potatoes, what I like to do is with clean hands, give it a bit of a press. Make sure that it's even and that you've got room for that last layer of potatoes. This is gonna help make sure that the cheese sauce is evenly distributed anywhere that you've got air pockets, and it's gonna give you a little bit more of a more consistent bake when you uh, go ahead and bake it. It's also going to help in eliminating it from bubbling over because the cheese sauce is going to be completely distributed and you're not going to have big air pockets in it. Alright, so we're going to start our last layer of potatoes. Now is when you're going to be a little bit more selective about the slices of potato you're going to use and how they line up on the pan. Try and pick potato sizes that are a little bit more uniform because this is what people are going to see. So that's our last layer of potato. We're now going to top it with the last uh, bit of our cheese sauce. And you're going to want to cover this and put it in a 350 degree oven for about an hour and a half. I would highly recommend putting this on a baking sheet because it will bubble over some and it's going to make cleanup a lot easier. Also avoid uh, burning cheese sauce on the bottom of your oven. What I would suggest doing is uh, getting a piece of aluminum foil and either coating it in some butter, oil, or cooking spray. Uh, wrap it around the top of this baking dish and stick it in your oven with an aluminum pan underneath. After about an hour to about an hour and a quarter, you're going to pull this out, check it with a knife, and if it's done, if the potatoes are cooked, we're going to take that aluminum foil off and let the top crisp up. Another option if you prefer not to use aluminum foil, you can use a piece of parchment paper and another aluminum pan. The added weight from the second aluminum pan is going to help limit the bubble over as well and uh, you can stick this in the oven just as it is. Okay, so it's been about an hour 45 now, the last 15 minutes with the uh, cover off and you can see it's still bubbling away quite a bit but the top is nice and golden brown. Uh, I would absolutely recommend letting this sit for 15 to 20 minutes, maybe even longer 
it will be uh, very hot for quite some time but it will also thicken up the consistency will thicken up quite a bit more which will allow you to serve it without things falling apart so hope you guys enjoy this and please take a look at the description for the quantities of ingredients